Mm. So this is the mapping tutorial. It's gonna be a fucking train wreck, I tell you what. Um, I guess we'll start off with a new window in Hammer. First thing we are making is the room and spawns. Just a few basics. Holding spacebar, left click, you can move around in any of the windows. Um, shit, I'm in over my head. So, ah, to change grid scale, we use the square brackets. Our first room can be that big. That's the top view. It'll it'll say which view it is in these corners here. Side view, uh, a bit bigger. <coughs> and when you're making new objects, it's best to have no draw, tools no draw. This way, it prevents making further um, lighting faces than it needs to make. We'll make our first room hollow, negative. 64. Boom, and that turns into a whole bunch of walls. When you're making another, when you're making a new block, if you select a previous block, oh shit, with the selection tool and then go to block tool, it'll create, fucking hell, it'll create the new block to the same Z dimension as the one you've already selected. So if I make it in the side view, make it about that big, I press enter, it's already the width of the room. Like so. And we need to put some places to spawn. Info player terrorist is one. Info player counter terrorist is another, and the last one is info player start. We'll give, I don't know, we'll also make a fourth one. Info teleport destination, and this one we will give the name spawn. So now we have everything we need to go into the level. They're a bit closer to the edge, we'll move them back. Holding control, you can select multiple items. And yeah, we'll move them back. Now, the outer constraints of your level, be it a box or a skybox, needs to be a regular brush. But things like this inside of those bounds can be a funk detail. We can hotkey that by doing Control T. Pressing Control T will bring up that little window, and funk detail will be the default. Let me just move this DVD cover of Fantastic Mr. Fox to the next little point. Can I change the scale, please? Shit. Curved ramps. We're doing curved ramps now. <laughs> uh, make another block. No draw, of course. It's going to be a two-sided ramp. With surf ramps, the surface needs to be steeper than 45 degrees. It can be 46 degrees. It can be 85 degrees. Keep in mind that the closer to 45 degrees, the easier it's going to be to surf. Make a 
make that. That's about right. We'll make this first one 128. Now to get the ramp shape, we use the slice tool, clipping tool, sorry. And we drag out the shape that we want. We can select which is kept and which is gone by clicking the clipping tool button a bunch more. Having both sections white and blue means both sections will be cut when you make the slice. The red section will be the part that gets deleted. Cool. Now, in the side view, we'll turn the grid scale up a bit, just so it's easier to see. And uh, we'll make that a funk detail. Holding shift, click and drag, it creates a copy. Now, control M is the transformation hotkey. And a decent decent degree to rotate is 4 in the Y window. Using the vertex tool we highlight them all and drag the bottom corner to the bottom corner of the previous one. Highlight them both, copy them again, rotate again, now 8 degrees and highlight them all, drag the bottom corner so it snaps to the grid oh shit that was the wrong corner, okay bottom corner to the grid bottom corner to grid highlight them again control M 16 going up in twos Oh, fuck, I did it again. I'm not a morning person. This is definitely something I do when I've been awake for many hours. I think one more should do it. Oh. 32. Snap to grid. Snap to grid. So there is a nice little surf ramp. Control T again will turn them all into one object. So that way it's easier to move it around. It's facing backwards. Oh no! Control L flips things in the window that you're highlighted horizontally. Control I flips it vertically. That looks about right. I would like to extend this, but if I select that, it selects the whole thing. What am I going to do? Ignore group. That little button up there. So I can select that single piece and drag it out. Cool. Let's make the floor. Well, a split. Oh yeah, I selected that first. Cool. Things can go outside the bounds, that's fine. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that jump. Perhaps I'll bring it closer. They can come back. And select this. Shift. Drag. Control L. We'll spin it around. And we'll put an end platform right here. Because why not? Now, what's next? Custom textures. As you can see in our 3D view, 
nothing is textured just yet. It's hard to see where everything is. So let's make a couple of custom textures, shall we? VTF edits. New. Here looks like a nice texture. Copy these fucking parameters. Should be fine. Wow, look at that. Save. Hammer stuff. I'll make a new folder. Tut. Ramp 1. We'll make a new one. Wow, that's really high detail. Ramp two. One more. What's this? What's that? What's this? Ooh. Weapons. <laughs> Let's make... Wait, what are the dimensions of this? 1 and 2, 4 by 5, 12. Perfect. And that can be... Ramp 3. Oh shit, it already made the fucking VMTs. Wow. Excellent. I must have had some checkbox checked. Interesting. Anyway, if you don't have a VMT file... Oh, I need to change them anyway. This will be... You need to change... The... Fuck. Basically, the VMT files points to the VTF file in your Counter-Strike directory. Naturally, everything before this mark is going to be uh, in the Materials folder. So we'll get rid of Hammer Stuff, because I don't have a folder called Hammer Stuff in the, tutor in the Materials folder. We'll copy them all. And we'll go to C Strike Materials. We'll make a new folder called Tut. And paste it all in there. Now, when we go back to Hammer, we are going to see there's a face edit sheet. We've got our textures. Wahoo! Ramp 1. Apply. We can change the scale here. I have it set to 0.25 for some reason. And to make it wrap around the edge a bit cleaner, we select that face, holding Alt, right click, and then it seamlessly wraps around. Next face, Alt, right click. Now the walls, the walls, the walls, the walls, the walls won't be our tutorial textures and the floor can be this why not this jump can be this why not Starting to look like Happy Hands 5. Happy Hands 4? Oh, I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. Really 
rough texturing. Because why not? Because we wouldn't we wouldn't release a map looking like this. But if you're giving your bonus to somebody else, they're going to take care of the, care of the texturing anyway. Oh. Um, holding spacebar in here, left click, you can look around. WASD make you fly around. And spacebar, right click, moves you like this. Mm, because it's already textured, I guess I can get rid of the original one down here. And just copy this one over here. Um... We'll change the scale of that ramp. Control M, scale, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2. Now it's slightly bigger. Oh, that end platform is a bit small. Another way to change the shape of things Say we have multiple objects selected and we don't want to move this. If we stretch it out, it's going to do that. That's not what we want. So we'll use Vertex Tool. We will highlight. That's hard to see. We will highlight. Using Alt, you can select a finer things. It won't snap to grid like that. We use that, left arrow it out, and that way the ramp itself stays intact. If we have a highlight object highlighted, if we go into texture and give it a texture, it'll do the whole object at once. Because it's a cube and we can see all sides, it's best to do it that way. Oh shit, I still had that highlighted, didn't I? Control Z undoes. Amazing. Alright. Now, if we were to go in game right now, it would be very fucking dark, because there are no lights inside. Who would have thought? So, what we'll do is we'll make put it up there. Yep, that'll do. We will make just a simple light entity. Alt enter, you can enter the properties of it. Brightness, we'll make that about 400. We can also pick the color. We'll leave the top one white. Now, for a massive room like this, I like to use I like to give the constant, turn that on. There's a lot of explanations on lights that I'm not willing to go into, but I'm sure you can find some documentation on it. And we'll copy this light. We'll lower it down. To about there. And this one, we will paint red. Because why not? It's a funny colour. Cool. So that's our first room done. I'll just squeeze this up a little bit. Oh. 
That's the first room done. Let's make a second room. Oh shit, I forgot to keep dragging my Fantastic Mr. Fox DVD colour. Fuck. And it's not going to be in order. Fuck. Copy our room over. Now, this next room is going to have a skybox. And it's going to have sunlight coming in. So we'll use the slice tool and we'll slice it right about there. Keeping both parts. Cool. We'll go inside there and using that. Uh, fuck. Skybox. Tool skybox. And we'll paste that onto the top section. Now, um, I think having Skybox will give it just generic lighting. But what we want is specific lighting. So we'll make another entity. If this entity can be anywhere on the map. That's fine. And this entity is going to be a light environment. Um, how do I do this again? Brightness, we'll set that to 500. The sun can have a little bit of a yellow tint. Uh, pitch your roll. Is this the one that I do? And we'll use the point at button and click somewhere in the map. And that will give it the sunset angle. You can go in game and determine where the sun is to give it a nicer angle. We'll give it we'll give it a bit further down pointed downwards. Cool. Apply. Now We'll just copy these over. Over to here. It's easy to use shift and drag rather than um, control C and paste because it's not going to be anywhere near where you want it to be. Shifting and dragging is just way easier. We need to make a teleport destination. Info. Yep. Teleport destination. Boom. We don't want it in the floor. We'll scale down the grid a bit. Up one arrow. We'll call this stage two. Actually, we'll raise it up a bit, and I'll show you why soon. That can go there. And back on stage one, highlight this. We'll make a new a new block with the trigger texture. Make it nice and thin. Control T. We'll make this trigger teleport. Remote destination. Stage two. Uh yeah. That's what we want. Hang on a second. Ah, okay. Um, 
Because we're heading into this teleport facing this way, if we spawn here, we're going to be facing the wrong way. We'll just grab all this. Control L. Easy as that. Um, now, if we were to go through this teleport and come through the other side, we're going to retain our speed going through the teleport, aka tele jumping. How we get around that is we use play a clip and we make a new box surrounding the teleport destination without touching its sides. Enter. Make hollow. We'll make it go out by four so it's nice and small. And because there's still a floor on there, we use ignore group, we highlight the floor, boom. This is the really simple way of preventing telehopping. There are other ways that are more difficult, but this will do fine. Shit, that's a really fucked up name. Toti. This map is called Toti. Surf Toti. Cool. I guess something we can make is a spiral. Everything's off grid, but I don't care. Make it hollow. Negative 64, putting a negative makes it outwards. Ignoring group, we will get rid of the floor and the roof. Boom. So now we've got a tube. I'll give this tube a t quick texture. Uh, that. No, we'll make it that. Turning off ignore grid, we will make this a funk detail. When you have ignore grid turned on and you're trying to make a funk detail, it tends to screw around a bit, so just make a note to keep that turned off when you're making Funk grid, uh, funk detail. First rotation. We will slice it and keep that section. We'll also make another slice. This is just how I like to make spirals. Because by doing this, The edge can have one texture and the rest of the spiral can have another texture. That way it's easy to see when you're going down. We will turn those into a thunk detail. Drag it down. And we'll rotate it counterclockwise. 90 degrees. And we'll repeat that until all four sections of our spiral are done. So when we go through, we will come out there. Wow. It's a bit of a funky spiral. Something else people want to know about is how to make holes in walls. So I guess I'll cover that. Just 
Judging by this, we're going to be falling down quite a bit. So, we'll make a new ramp. No draw. Of course. Slice it up. That's a bit tall, don't you think? Using the vertex tool, we will stretch it down and that way the split where the sky is will stay the same. Move that down a bit so we have some reaction time. Control T. And we'll also put a nice uh, a split. Shit. What have I done? <laughs> okay. Nice little split. Very rough. I guess because that's highlighted. It'll maintain the Z dimension. Fill up that gap. What? God damn it. It didn't... Psh, whatever. Easy fix. That's a one fun detail. That's all stretched out. Ah, that's okay. Now, a hole in the wall. A wall with a hole in it, using the ever so frustrating calf tool. Now I haven't actually done this before, so it's going to be a fantastic experience. No draw. Make a big old hole. We go down here and we can choose cylinder. We'll give it 12 sides and whichever window your cursor is in is whichever it's going to create the cylinder top down. So if we do it here, the circle appears here and the length appears there. Just keep that in mind. Extend it out a bit. Um, I guess if it's a... Actually, no. I need to make an arch, don't I? The man wants an arch. Arch. And this will bring up this little window. We'll give it a wall width of 10, number of sides, 12, arch, 360. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Boom. Now, with this intersecting like this, we will carve. Ooh, we didn't like that. Please don't crash. Wowzers. It really did not like that. It did not like that at all.
Okay. Is it done? No, it's not done. See, this is why we don't use the carve tool. Never, never ever use the carve tool. It's a fucking piece of shit. Where was I up to? I hope I didn't lose too much. I was up to there. Okay, that's fine. We can work with that. Never, never, ever use a calf tool. Hello, Blue Ivy. Hello, Stick Surfing. I am failing. Because I tried to use that stinking carve tool. What a piece of shit. Carve tool just fucks everything up. I don't know how Draft is managing to use it, but that's his funeral when it does that shit. Okay. Where were we? Oh, I need to make the bottom ramp again. That'll do. Safe. Remake the wall. And we will remake the cylinder, the arch, sorry. Ten, number sides eight. Yep, 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 yep. Cool. Stretch it out. Mm -hmm. Give it a different texture. Now, we are going to slice up this wall because slicing lost. <laughs> Slicing things is safer than the carve tool. So now we have this little do flicky that we can slice up instead. Wow, that's right on. And we'll just go through and trace the wall of the tube as best as we can. Now to, pre to prevent making more slices, we'll select the middle section each time just to keep 
the vertices to a minimum. Because when you start making larger maps, you really want to try and save how many vertices you have. And now we can get rid of the middle. Boom. There's our hole in the wall. Simple as that. It's pretty rough, but, you know. Now we'll select all our pieces. Turn them into a funk detail. Bam. Selecting our, our limits, we'll make a new platform for us to land on. Shit. Ah. Ah, shit. I forgot to turn it back into a block. Block. Hooray, we've made our surf map. Now, fall zone triggers. Every map needs them. So we get our trigger tool again. Make a nice skinny zone. Generally, you want your fall zones to be like a minimum of four units tall. If they're any shorter, then you have a risk of creating glitch B hops. And that's not what we want. So four or bigger. Not too big. Otherwise you're just gonna piss everyone off. Select these two, turn them into a trigger teleport and the remote destination will be spawn because that's the stage that we start on as for this one make a little gap between the ramps so we don't hit it accidentally this one will go to stage two. That's a surf map. Actually, I need to make the ones that go around the ting. For fuck's sake, why is it doing that? Uh uh. It's all one object. Yes, I would like to add it to the existing entity. So now I don't have to give those new blocks the information. They are already part of the original. And ideally you want to put triggers on each one of these, but come on. You already know how. I've just shown you. We'll copy this little box. Over to the spawn. And we'll put that over our... Which one is it? Control Shift E will center the 3D view. Control E centers the 2D views. Is that our spawn? Yes, it is. So we'll put it over this guy and he can go into the air. So we don't head hit on the bottom of this play clip box when we're trying to do our spawn pre hop. <sighs> okay. Details. Let's put in some models.
prop static apply world model and here we have a whole bunch of shit here are some sneak peeks <gasps> apply there we go there's a tree I made I'm really proud of this tree let's put this tree everywhere go here he can go down here yeah that is a nice tree wow look at this map what a fantastic map other details we can do are like block things a lot of detailing is done with the block tool. And we just create random shit. It's it's basically an imagination sort of thing. What can you do with the block tool? really is nothing to detailing. It's just a time consuming thing that people like doing. And for this section, I guess we'll have archways going through the sky. Wow. Arch one eighty preview two seventy no zero yes cool number of sides twelve wall width thirty two boom why did it do that? Gee whiz. There we go. Crisis averted. Check it out. I think we're ready to... Actually, I've, I'm going to put one more tree here. Okay, and now we render the map. Uh, fast lighting, fast viz. Generally when you're doing a lot of compiling and trying to figure out where which ramps should go where, we do no rad and that turns off the compiling the light information because light information takes a lot of resource. <coughs> resources. This is going to lag the video a little bit.
forgot all about my banana. And it's done. No errors because we did everything correctly. Didn't we? Open up Steam. A professional would have done this already. Play Momentum. Slightly bigger. Map. Toti. Wow, it's really dark in here. It is very dark in here. That light is not bright enough. Or maybe I need more lights. Oof. And the tele jump doesn't work. That's interesting. Let's figure out why. Yes, trigger, teleport, stage two, gotcha. Teleport destination, stage two. Why hasn't that worked? Clients? Is that what it needs to do? Anyway, while we're here, let's turn this brightness up, shall we? 600, and I think we need to turn off quadratic and turn on linear. We will also make another copy because generally that lights things up a bit better. This one down here. 600. Turn off quadratic, turn on linear. And we'll make another one over here. Guess we'll have to turn on clients for all of these. Save, run it again. That's better. Nice pretty lighting. Clients. Had to turn clients on. And here's the outdoors. Apparently the sun's over there. <laughs> That's all good.
and it's really dark down here because there's no lights. Let's put some light. Actually, we'll open up the windows. Slice them up. Ignore group. Slice this up. Select these. And we'll turn those into sky boxes. So now when we go down here, these will act as windows. And the light will come streaming in. Run it again. Fuck, I forgot to show you guys that. Shit. Oh well, if you know how to use the slice tool by now, it's all good. I really hope I f didn't forget to change the source when fixing up the lights and the teleports. Oh, it's really dark in here. And that ramp's really hard to do. But that's fine. It's only a 10 minute map. <laughs> cool. Hooray. I did the map. So hopefully that covers all of your issues that you have with mapping. And hopefully we will be seeing some more fantastic maps. Yeah, send me a message if there's anything you need to know. Laters.